Hey guys, Prowl1701 here, and today we're going to be reviewing the Big Finish Audio Out of Time, Part 1, which has the Tenth Doctor meeting the Fourth Doctor. I very much enjoyed this story. Um, I like how it's set on a place kind of outside of time. It kind of reminds me of like the restaurant at the end of the universe, you know? <coughs> <coughs> but a little more outside of time. I guess more like where the division base is in flux. That's pretty cool. Uh, what really makes this story work for me is the interactions between the fourth Doctor and the tenth Doctor. They're great. Uh, Tom Baker and David Tennant both do a really good job voicing their characters in this story. I enjoy a lot of their interactions, um, especially uh, as the fourth Doctor figures out who the tenth Doctor is. The tenth Doctor, of course, recognizes the fourth Doctor. I like some of the little nods, uh, like for instance when the tenth Doctor is talking to Jura or whatever her name, whatever her name is, and the fourth Doctor enters the room. He's like, I, the tenth Doctor's like, nobody walks in, nobody walks through a door like he does. Of course, referencing Tom Baker talking about walking through a door. That famous story. I enjoy little nods like that. I like the part when he's like, because I think he knows, and now he knows that I know. That's a cool line. Their conversation at the end of the story when the fourth Doctor leaves is also really good, and I enjoyed it. It feels very heartfelt. But my favorite part was, like, right in the middle of the story. It, the story's about an hour long, like, right at an hour long, I think, an hour and one minute or something. <clears throat> but, like, right about the 28, 29, 30-minute mark, the fourth Doctor and the tenth Doctor are having a conversation right before they split up, which I love the paper, rock, scissors they do to decide who goes because it's a nice callback to Destiny of the Daleks. So I love the fact the fourth Doctor wins it. You are going to do... And the tenth Doctor's like, you are going to do paper. You changed it. Or maybe your memory is just slipping. I enjoyed that. It's a nice little callback to Destiny. Because I always love the paper, rock, scissors stuff in Destiny. But the conversation they have there is a fantastic conversation. Like when the tenth Doctor's talking, and if you get killed, what happens to me? I, I, my whole life's gone in a flash every generation. Fortress like, oh, you do... You, you uh, are a bit full of yourself, aren't you? <laughs> you are a bit full of yourself, aren't you? <laughs> I love that. And then I love that line about, um, you know, when the fourth doctor tells the tenth doctor, you know, and you know, what about you? You know, you're a reminder of me, of my own mortality. Um, <clears throat> you know, Descartes would have kittens, you know. And then he quotes the Latin when tennis like eggs. Like, don't tell me I've forgotten my Latin. You know, you are, therefore, I am long gone. You know, and that's what he tells him. You know, the, the fact you're here, you are a reminder uh, that I'm not here anymore. And then he tells Tennant, you know, but that's okay. I don't mind because I will continue to be me, just not this me. So I love that line because it does harken back to that classic who uh, motif of when the doctor regenerates. It really is just them getting a new body. The personality does change some, but it's really just them getting a new body. That is how they referred to regeneration a lot in Classic Who. I was also here in 1953, but I was in a different body. <clears throat> a new body is like a new house. Takes a little getting used to. Whereas in the modern show, it's very much, you know, some new man goes sauntering away, and I'm dead. Or, you know, I, there's echoes of who I was. It very much treats it as almost like each incarnation when they regenerate dies to an extent and a new person takes over even though it's still the same character they don't even know who they are i much prefer the classic version of that and i like that the fourth doctor is kind of reminding the tenth doctor you know it's okay that i'm not going to be me forever you know i will continue to be me just not this me i love that line it's my favorite line in the whole story um and that's i like because you, you get the impression this is the tenth doctor right before end of time the fact he's companionless, some of the things he says, <coughs> that's where he seems to be at in his life, is between Waters of Mars and Tenth Planet, when he's kind of not willing to face up with everything, uh, excuse me, Waters of Mars and End of Time, uh, when he's not quite willing to face up to everything. So that's kind of some reassuring words from the Fourth Doctor I like. Uh, the guest cast are all right in this, the one playing the soldier with him, Jura, I think's her name. She's fine. The one playing the dad, I like. And then there's, what, the other pilot, the other female pilot, she's fine. Uh, the twist with the dad is good. I won't 
I guess I won't go into it here in case somebody hasn't seen it, but how he plays out as a character I think is well done, especially since I didn't see it coming. It's a great reference to something in Classic Who, which I like, um, and I definitely didn't see it coming, so when it when it does happen, I'm sitting there going, they got me. Good. I like, yes. <laughs> Applaud. The uh, Dalek voices are great. I'm guessing that's Nicholas Briggs. They're phenomenal. The Supreme Dalek having the lower voice, that's very well done. Um, and I enjoy it. It's good for being an hour long. I, again, I like the doctors on their own do really well, and any time they interact is a lot of fun, especially seeing two doctors that are so far apart on the timeline. Something we don't get in the show much, just for, you know, the actor's age. It's hard to do on the show. But it's nice uh, seeing two incarnations of the doctor that are so spread apart on the timeline and how they interact. And I love the fact that even though Tennant's much older, he never gets the better of Tom. Tom holding his own the whole time, which he's the fourth Doctor. It's hardly surprising. Uh, watching them interact is kind of is really fun. Uh, the animation is really good because I did watch this for the first time, watching it synced to Josh Snare's animation, and I like Josh. I enjoy his YouTube content. He's a fantastic YouTuber, uh, and strikes me as a fantastic person as well. Honestly. Um, <clears throat> I really like it. The character animation models look really good. I enjoy those, especially, you know, for something that doesn't have a professional backing to it. They look good. They're very fitting, especially for, like, a fourth Doctor story. I, I can imagine a, the fourth Doctor being done in that kind of whimsical animation style. Looks better than Fury from the Deep, for sure. Uh, the uh, backgrounds are phenomenal. That's where it really shines is the backgrounds and the Dalek models. The backgrounds and the Dalek models look fantastic. I was highly impressed with how they looked. It uh, really helped me enjoy the story. But I enjoyed, like I said, the cartoon models as well. <coughs> they represented their characters well with the doctors. It even had Tennant's slight slant of his, how his nose slightly slants. Well, that was even in there. It was nice attention to detail. So yeah, I, um, I found the animation really good and really helped me enjoy the story because I, again, I, I, people in general, we tend to be a very sight-oriented uh, species and I struggle a bit with the audios I had that problem with spare parts trying to picture Jubilee I enjoyed with, with just the audio but I struggled with spare parts so with this one I'm glad I had visual representation to watch it the first time seeing it uh, and I really uh, really uh, thought it was good and again I enjoy the ending I like the fact the doctor is able to save uh, some of the people and the fact they have a nice conversation right at the end. It was uh, it was good. I did not feel like I wasted my time. I watched all of it over the course of a day. I'd watch, you know, about 15 minutes or so, and I'd take a break. I'd come back take watch another 15 minutes or so. And I, I finished it all in one day and thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, Tom Baker and David Tennant are just really good together. Um, I mean, I, I'm sure they recorded separately, but they still seem to bounce off each other pretty well. Uh, their doctors, which I really enjoy. I wouldn't mind seeing another tenth Doctor Fourth Doctor story <clears throat> with them together. So yeah, Out of Time Part One. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really good story, and uh, I really appreciate um, one of my patrons uh, helping me be able to listen to it. Um, so I want to give a shout out to some of my top tier patrons, Stephen Crane and the Fifth Doctor. I appreciate their continued support. I also appreciate uh, one of my other patrons, Unknown289, who was a big help in me being able to listen to this. Uh, if you've enjoyed this review, go ahead and click the like button and the, descri uh, the subscribe button. I can't talk today. Subscribe button. I uh, am trying to reach 1,000 subscribers. That is my goal now. But I'll be happy just to reach 800 right now. I also have a P.O. box if there's anything you would like to send me. That's down in the description below, as is a link to my Amazon wish list if there's anything on there you would like to order for me I update it regularly i also have a patreon if you would like to support me that way and if you have a minute check that out see if there's anything there that interests you most importantly though thank you for watching